guys! Today I'm going to show you how to make the coolest, funnest, most adorable summer tote bag. It's going to look so cute. You're going to be in style. You're going to have your favorite fabrics on you. And you're not going to believe how easy and fun this bag is to make. Hey, welcome back to my channel. So this is the bag that we're going to make today. It is super stylish, super fun. They're just adorable and like, okay, I don't know if you're like me, but I like to be prepared. Uh, this bag holds everything. Yeah, I put it to the test, it holds everything. So if we haven't met before, I'm Kristen with IcyStarsQuilting.com. I share my tips, tricks, and tutorials. Oh, and one more thing you're going to see in this video, there is two parts to this video, which I'm going to call the before my sewing machine ate my finger and the after my sewing machine ate my finger. And um, as always, living by uh, example of what not to do. Um, you're gonna get a safety lesson. Yeah. Okay, let's look at our materials. I have these laid out here. I'm gonna go through real quick so that you know what the cut sizes are and what each one of these is before I show you how to put it all together. Okay, what you're going to need is the outer pieces right here. Okay, the outer pieces are 26 by 20 inches. You are going to need two for the outer and two for the inner. These are all 26 by 20. You're going to need two strap pieces that are 27 inches by five inches. You're going to need two batting pieces that are four inches by 27 inches. And you're going to need one, actually two inside pocket pieces for the inner and the outer piece. I just have mine the same color as the straps, make it real easy, that is five by seven, okay? The other thing that you'll need is this piece right here. And I'm gonna explain this to you in detail in a few minutes. It's a mesh and I just found it in like the section of the store by all the embroidery threads and all that but I like to cut this down and this makes like the bottom of my bag. So I do go and I cut this to size just to give the bottom of the bag some stability. These are my outer pieces on the bag. Now I cheated a little bit. I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay. So because I wanted that nice quilty look that you saw on the finished bag, can you see the texture in this? Like how lovely that looks. I cheated and this has a muslin backing. It has batting on the inside. You can see even more so the quilting texture when you look at the plain back, right? And then it has the lovely fabric on the outside. I set this up on my long arm, but you don't have to have it this detailed. You could do straight line quilting. You could also quilt at an angle and do like a nice X pattern on there. It's going to show up lovely no matter what. This is how it showed up on my long arm machine. You can tell that I'm making multiples of these bags. So I just laid them all out, stitched all the way across, came out with this lovely textured fabric, and then I cut it up. So I have two for the outside pieces right here, these two bright colors, and then my two inside fabrics, which just plain fabric is all you need, but those are cut to the exact same size as my outer pieces. Now, I'm going to show you how to assemble the straps because that is really, really simple. And let's get started on that first. So I got one of my fabric pieces here and one of my batting pieces. My batting pieces are cut a little bit long simply because I was lazy and did not trim them. But here is my strap piece. I'm going to lay my batting piece roughly in the middle. It doesn't have to be like absolutely perfect. You can see that I have fabric on this side and I have fabric on this side of it. And I'm just kind of doing it in the middle so that there is some fabric on either side and it's fairly even, okay? I'm going to take this right here and I'm gonna fold it. I almost forgot what you'll need are some of these clips or some easy pins to work with, okay? They come in real handy, these little clips do. But I'm gonna fold over that fabric right there, okay? And then I'm going to fold it to the middle here, 
Then I'm gonna fold over this fabric and I'm going to fold the whole piece over right there. Okay, so I have my fabric. I'm gonna fold it over the edge here, okay? And then I'm gonna pinch it and I'm gonna fold it to the middle of my batting piece right here. Then I'm going to take this fabric, fold it over, and it is going to meet on that edge right there. Now that is where I'm going to put my clip. I'm gonna show you when we get to the sewing machine how you can kind of like make it a little bit more perfect as you're going, but really it kind of finishes itself once you get that middle started. I always like to start with the middle and then I work my way out because once you get that middle started, the rest of it just kind of, it kind of knows where to go. So this one is already folded to the middle because this one is like stuck in the middle, right? And go all the way out. Now I can feel like there's kind of like a lump in the, the batting right there. I'm gonna kind of smooth it out as I go, but this is gonna give you some nice, really cushy straps for your summer tote bag. All right, and then we're gonna go all the way down here. Again, I am taking this, folding it over, and then folding it to the middle. Folding over the edge here and bringing it up to me. That's why it's really good to get in the beginning a good spot for that. Add your clip, and I've got clips every, you know, few inches or so, like if it got about three inches or so in there in between them. And I'm going to do my whole strap this way. I wanna make sure that this is tucked under so there's no like weird fabric bunching up. And then you'll come back and you'll do the other strap exactly the same and we'll take them both to the sewing machine so you can see how we get those nice, beautiful straps that look super professional and super comfortable as well. And I can see like right here, I've got like a little bit of extra sticking out. So I'm gonna move this in a little bit. But what you should have on this side is these will meet and then this side is just the fabric pressed over, right? This is what it should look like all the way through. That side's just folded. That side's nice and tucked. There's no raw edges except for on the ends here and you can trim those if you have any extra batting in there. Let's take these to the sewing machine and I will show you how to work on your straps and get those out of the way. So then the rest of the bag is very simple, easy task. I have both of my straps here. I did go ahead and trim down some of the extra batting that I had here just for ease um, of getting things done. Now, when you're working on this right here, I like to sew the open end first and then go back in and sew this end. Why? Because I want these ends to be the ones that look really, really nice and meet up, okay? So I'm going to start with this end. Remember you have one side of your fabric that is tucked all the way to the middle and one side that is just kind of over here tucked in a little bit. So you're gonna tuck this underneath your sewing machine and then you're going to get very close to the edge without going too far off, okay? So I'm gonna show you, I like to do about an eighth of an inch because it really keeps this side from opening up, okay? You want it to be nice and tucked tight. About an eighth of an inch is probably what you're looking for. If you go and look at like your purses and things that you have, ladies, go see, like there's not a whole lot of wiggle room there. You want this purse strap, this bag, this beach bag tote to stay very nice and tight and these straps to hold up for a long time. So I like to sew about an eighth of an inch all the way down and I'm going to remove my clips as I go. And I've got white thread in here right now because this is a really light colored strap. You can use whatever color thread you want. You can go and make it contrasting. Just you know, keep it in line with the theme of your bag. 
Let me sew through some of this and then I'll show you up close what it is that I've got done. Okay, I'm not completely done sewing this side, but I went ahead and took it off so that I could show you. Do you see how nicely that matches up on the side? See how even they are? I can run my hand across it right here and there's not like, this side is not way back behind this one. They're nice and even right here. And that's exactly what we're wanting. Now up close, you get that nice, beautiful, straight, even stitches, okay? This is gonna be a really nice cushy bag handle because we have lots of fabric in here, because we have lots of batting in here, it's going to be a comfortable handle. Okay, I'm gonna finish sewing this side, then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna do this side, same, just a quarter of an inch, making sure that this stays flat the entire time. This side is all done. Time to go in and sew the other side. Again, I'm gonna do like an eighth of an inch all the way down because I really like this fluffy padded part. Doesn't that look nice? This is where I, uh, I stopped on the first time, so that's not like some random string just hanging off, that's where I stopped the first time. But look at this. Do you see like the thickness from the side? That's several layers of batting in there that are just gonna make this really, really comfortable when you have it loaded down with all of your beach gear or like your day out gear or picnic, whatever you're doing with this bag, library books, who knows? <laughs> um, it's gonna be really, really comfortable to carry. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew the other one and then I'm gonna show you how to do the next steps, which is actually working on the bag itself. So I unfortunately did not get this on video because I would have loved to have like seen actually what happened. I um, got my finger stuck in the sewing machine. Don't do that. It's very painful. This is a good moment to tell you. <laughs> okay, be careful. This really, it's really painful. It really hurt. It was very messy and I don't want you to do that to yourself. So, PSA. No matter how long you've been sewing, you are not immune to the workings of your machine. Yeah. So, okay. Let's move on to the next step because I still have to finish these bags. It's just going to be very awkward and I am sorry for the hideous bandage. This step is much easier to show you here than it is to just explain it. What I have right here is I have my two fabrics. My outside fabrics are gonna do this for both of the outside fabrics and the inside fabrics. Now, before you do this step, it's important to check, is your fabric directional? My fabric isn't really directional, but if your fabric is directional, you're going to want to know that both pieces are at the top and you're doing this on the bottom, okay? So I, I find this better to do it on each individual piece. I have my pieces with um, right sides facing together, but try doing this on each individual piece first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark one, two, three, four inches by one, two, three, four inches in, and I'm going to draw a box here, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this out. So make sure that your lines are straight and you're going to cut out this box that is four inches by four inches. This is going to help you in the making of your bag. It's gonna help a lot, okay? So cut out that piece. You're gonna do this on both corners of the base of your bag. 
Okay, so I'm gonna come back over to this side doesn't matter if you do it front or back just remember this is the bottom of your bag that's the top of your bag up there so make sure do you guys ever like lose your pen all the time like I do it doesn't matter if I put it like anywhere I I will constantly lose my pen okay so I'm doing four inches by four inches And we are just going to power through the fact that my finger feels like it should be about this big right now, but it doesn't look any different. So we're just going to power through that and hopefully um, that gets better very quickly because I need my fingers for doing things. So I'm going to cut this out right here and I have one side done. I am and. This is total scrap. You can use this for whatever you want later on. Now I'm gonna do this to the other side of my outer fabric and then I'm gonna do it to the inner fabric too. So for the inner piece, make sure again that the pieces are right sides together. The pretty sides of the fabric are facing each other. You're gonna sew all the way down each side, right and left. And then in the middle, you're going to sew a little bit on either side. This is for the inner piece, okay? You're going to leave a section that is probably about, I don't know, seven inches or so open in the middle. That is going to be how you're going to turn this bag right side out. Just trust me on this. If you've made any type of zipper pouch bag before or so, you will recognize this step. If you haven't, trust me on this. This is how you're gonna get the bag to turn right side out and it's a super easy fix in the end, okay? So go ahead, follow this diagram that's on the screen. This is how you're going to sew your bag. Now, on the outer piece, you are going to do something very, very similar. You're going to line your pieces up just like I have here in the photo and you're going to sew down either side and then you're going to sew all the way across the bottom. Don't leave an open space in the bottom. Okay, let's start on the outer pieces of your bag because I find that this is a little bit thicker when it has like the, the quilting to it and it has the batting in it. So it's a little bit thicker to work with. What you have is your piece that has a corner out of it like this. I want you to grab it at both of the corners that are not sewn and squish it to where it makes this nice flat line all the way across, okay? so. Let's do this one more time. So you can see it's got that nice square cut out of it. You're going to match those corners up and if you pull it tight, these two seams right here are going to meet up. You see that? They're gonna meet up and that's exactly what you want. So you can grab one of your clips and you can put right here. Now I like to nest these seams because I want to make sure that they stay lined up. So nesting means one of the seams goes this way, the other seam goes this way. I have a link that I will put up above this video right here where you can see like how I use nesting in the rest of my quilting process. But nesting just makes sure that these seams are not going to shift as I'm sewing. And these are not that long, so I'm, I'm not really gonna bother with pinning the rest of them. But this is how you're gonna get the square bottom of your bag, okay? This is how wide the bottom of your bag is going to be, it's this area right here. So now I'm gonna put this through the sewing machine and sew all the way across that corner right there. Is 
the bottom of my bag. It's gonna be great. Just, if you wanna take a quick peek, let's look inside here. And I can poke this out a little bit and I can show you. So you'll go in, you'll poke at those corners and you can see right there where the bottom of my bag and the side of my bag line up really, really nicely. Okay, so make sure that when you're doing that, you saw me on the sewing machine, I did a back stitch over here, I did a back stitch here in the middle, and a back stitch over here. Those are where the areas that I feel this bag is going to get pushed and um, I guess, you know, the most wear and tear. So that's why I did those. Okay, I'm gonna move on to my other side of my bag over here. All the pretty sides are still on the inside. I haven't changed anything else. And I'm gonna do the same thing, pulling those open corners and then making sure that my seams are nested, sticking a clip right there, just like that. Now, this is easier to do because it is thicker. It has more weight to it. I'm gonna show you in just a second on the inner pieces too, how it's the same process. It just takes a little bit more fidgeting with. Let's get this one sewn down first. real quick sew our pocket okay so this is a very simple straightforward pocket nothing fancy about this um my fabric happens to be light gray and plain so we're just going to um assume that this is wrong sides out or right sides together is how you're going to want to do this if you have a nice printed fabric okay so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to sew this shape right here, okay? I'm going to leave that spot all along the top of my pocket open. I don't wanna sew there. I'm gonna show you why in just a minute, but I'm going to also change the seam allowance on this to a half inch because it's gonna make my job way easier when I go to sew it shut after I turn the pocket right side out, okay? So right sides together right now, we're gonna sew all the way around the pocket like I showed you, starting at the end here, and we're gonna use a half inch seam allowance. Now I'm gonna grab just your regular standard chopstick. This is very handy when you are turning things inside out and you want those nice sharp corners. So I'm gonna turn my pocket right sides out and I'm gonna use this chopstick to kind of go in and poke those corners to where they are nice and straight. Just gives it a much better look, right? It just gives it a much better look. Now on, this doesn't do anything to it. It just makes it nice and straight. Usually I like to go and I like to use my iron and press this nice and flat so you get those beautiful crisp edges. That is also an option. You don't have to do that, but it really does make it nice. Um, this spot where I left this opening right here, this is going to be the bottom of your bag. Okay. Don't forget that the spot that we left that opening where we turned everything inside out, that is the bottom of your pocket. Because in a minute, we're going to sew this to the interior lining of our bag and we're going to stitch right through that and you will never know that that hole was there. Okay, to reinforce that again, okay, we're going to sew across the top of the bag here, which is going to keep this nice and flat and make our pocket really, really nice. So I'm just going to do, um, I don't know, let's do a, a cute little, um, a zigzag stitch. 
why not? Across here, across our bag, across the top of the pocket right here, let's do a quick zigzag stitch. Nothing like super fancy but it works right so I want you to get the lining of your bag and we're going to sew this inside the lining of our bag see look I've still got that hole right there okay I've still got that hole but in just a second it's gonna disappear now this is a step that you are going to want to use some of your pins for you want to keep this pocket nice and straight you want to put it in the center and about about four inches down and in the center of one of your back pieces okay so remember if you have directional fabric keep an eye on what the top of your bag is and what the bottom of your bag is okay where we cut those holes out that's the bottom of your bag now you're going to choose either side and then I want you to pin the pocket so now that I have my pocket pinned just like that I'm going to sew three sides of the pocket one two three making sure that when I'm on this bottom I'm sewing really close to the edge because that is going to seal up that hole See how putting those pins in the middle of the pocket really helped? It held everything nice and steady while I sewed the pocket in. And now it's secured, it's cute, and you have a little spot to put your keys or whatever is handy right there. Okay, let's work on sewing the corners of your inside lining. Okay, it's the same same technique as before I just find that these like flimsier fabrics because I don't have the um, the batting and stuff in here is it's just that it's a little bit flimsier so it takes a little bit more working with you can use pins or uh, clips if you want I still like to use just the one in the middle that seems to be enough for me like I can handle you know pinching this fabric right here and making sure that it stays straight till I get to the pin then I do a little back stitch over that middle area there and then I can handle things to the end making sure that it stays to that corner nice and straight okay so make sure you're back stitching on both sides and in the middle and make sure that the seam is nested because it looks really really nice on your finished bag gives it that more professional look right sides wrong sides now you should be able to kind of get a feel for what your bag is going to look like that's the back of the pocket that you can see there here's the inside of the pocket and here is the bag I'm going to take it over to my table where I have a little bit more room instead of right here in front of my sewing machine and show you the next steps Okay, it's time for us to work with this material. Now, I told you I'd tell you a little bit more about this when the time came. This I found in my fabric store. It was very close to like the embroidery stuff and it comes in these sheets. This is what it looks like on the shelf when you're purchasing it. It comes in multiple different sizes. I just kind of grabbed a whole bunch of this size because it's bigger and whatever you don't use, you can just trim off and save for later. This stuff cuts super easy. So if you want to use scissors or if you want to use your rotary cutter and your ruler, either way. But the size piece that you're going to need is 17 by 8. Luckily, this is clear enough that I can lay it on top of my cutting mat and I can cut right I can see the lines right through it so it's not 
a big deal, but I am going to cut kind of in between these squares. Instead of cutting right on the line, I cut in between these squares. And it's very easy to cut, guys. You don't have to like, you know, use the force of the Hulk or anything down on your mat. And the lines themselves kind of give that, that grid work, make it really easy. You can see, you see on top where I just kind of cut in between the two lines. Okay, and then this one is 18, but I actually need 17. So I'm going to go and trim off an inch of this. to get the bottom of my bag. Now, I will probably not save this strip because it's very small, but I will save the other strip so that I can use it at a later time. I'm gonna make sure that I have this taken off. And um, this is going to give the bottom of your bag some stability. It's not going to make it like rigid or hard, but trust me, you don't want like the bottom of your bag really saggy, okay? Like if you put something heavy in there, you're, you're just gonna have like this weird shaped sack with a square in the middle. It's, it, you need some type of stability on the bottom of your bag. Now for this, I'm going to turn my bag the outer pieces of my bag right sides out and I'm going to kind of poke my finger here in the corners just like so okay and I'm going to go ahead and add and make sure that this piece fits nicely in my bag I have seen in tutorials before where, actually I think I want to trim off just a tiny bit of this, but I have seen in tutorials before where they actually hot glued this to the bottom of the bag just to make it stay there. I haven't found with my bags that I need to do that, but um, you know, I, I know that it's in there. I know that there's a stability piece in there and I'm just careful to leave it that way. I just trimmed off like an extra half a row there because it was a little bit it, it was kind of like wanting to kind of bow in the middle just because of how the seams were falling and so now I can push it into the corners on each side and the bottom of the bag it's just a little bit sturdier you see that line that it made right there, it just added a little bit more to it. Okay, so I have my piece down on the middle of that. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and clip my straps to the outside of my bag before we do anything because you want to be able to see where you're clipping them and make sure that there are no twists or turns in this part. So because I've done this a million times, I'm kind of fudging this a little bit. Don't freak out. I'm kind of fudging it a little bit so that I can get the feel for how I want these straps to be on my bag. Okay. I'm actually looking at this, seeing where the center is visually of my bag and then making my straps even from the center to the outside of my bag in the center of that. Okay, so so I'm kind of visually doing it. Now pay attention to how I have this handle right here. It's not twisted in any way, okay? Think about how your purse handles are, girls. It's not twisted. It has the shoulder strap right here and these two are exactly where they're supposed to be. Now, the fun part is you measured the first side but you don't have to measure where it is on the second side because you're going to hold your bag up. You're going to see and make that perfectly even with the one on the other side. And then you're going to clip. And then you're going to do the same thing on this side because again, you want them nice and even and you want it to look good. So this one is just a little bit off. It needs to move over just slightly. 
it's okay to fudge things if you need to, okay? It's totally okay to fudge things if you need to. So I'm gonna put the outer layer of my bag inside the inner layer. If that doesn't make any sense, just watch what I'm doing and you'll, you'll get the gist of it, okay? Right sides of fabric are together here, okay? And what I'm trying to line up first is the side seams of the bag right here and right here. Now, my handle pieces are still in there. We're just going to ignore them while we work on this step, okay? I'm gonna do that side I just did, and now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do this side seam and match up those side seams because you wanna do your side seams first. Then it's easy to kind of shake things out a little bit. I want you to kind of see like the whole thing of what I'm doing. So then you can like shake things out a bit and the next clip that you're going to put in is the one that goes right in the middle of your straps. And then I want you to take the one that's around your straps. I want you to grab this fabric, okay? And just go around and grab that. Now, you may be fine with just a few clips in there, personally. Well, I just threw that one on the other side of the room accidentally. <laughs> Personally, I like a few more clips in there just to secure everything. And it becomes easier once you have those kind of foundation clips that are like holding everything together, the, the side ones and the middle one um, and the strap ones, it gets a little bit easier to fill in the gaps. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to this side and do like I did where I kind of shake things out and you'll see they line up really, really well. Okay, so I have my middle clip here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna pinch where my strap is so that it lines up and make sure that it's in there securely. Grab that interior fabric right there. If you're not quite sure how this is gonna shake out, again, Trust me on this, in a few minutes, it's gonna look like this gorgeous, gorgeous bag. And we are in the home stretch. So right now it's just about making sure that everything is put together. And now we have all of our clips are on the bag and I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine. Okay, we're at the sewing machine. This is going good. Let me tell you this, you have two more steps to do and this bag is done. Three, if you actually top stitch, okay? Which I do suggest. So let's say three more steps. Sorry about misleading you with the two, but three more steps and then this is done. And they're all very easy steps too, okay? So I'm going to tuck my bag under here. I'm starting in between two of the straps, okay? I'm not going to just start on one of the straps. I'm starting in between the two straps. That way I just have a little bit more to ease into, okay? I'm gonna zoom in a bit so that you can see and I'm going to sew, um, it's a little over a quarter of an inch is what I've got here and that's just because that's the edge of my sewing machine and I like that, um, I like that measurement, okay? That's, that's just what it is. You can do whatever measurement you want, but you just wanna make sure that you get them all in here. When I get to this, this clip right here, this purple one is where my strap is, one of my straps, I'm going to sew over it, then I'm gonna go backwards, then I'm gonna sew again because I want it to be nice and secure, right? Okay, let's do this. We're gonna go all the way around. We're just going to work our way through the clips. If you've done any bag work before, this step is very familiar to you. I'm gonna slow it down a bit. And as I come to my clips, which are really handy, I'm just removing them. Now this one has the strap, my purple clip right there. Did you immediately hear it like working harder? Okay, I'm gonna back up. All the way over it and then go again. As I'm coming to the edge of this right here, I'm just gonna pull some more of my bag forward. 
okay it's just a big loop okay so I'm making sure that this is staying out of the way and making sure my fingers are staying out of the way and sewing Is sewn all the way around the top. Now, you may have noticed that the inside of your bag, that little plastic piece, is kind of uh, bouncing around in there a bit if you didn't decide to glue it in, which I don't normally glue mine in, but anyways, you may decide see that it's bouncing around in there a little bit. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to open up the bottom, that big hole that we left earlier, you're going to open that up and you're going to bring in the outside of your bag and you're just going to keep tugging until there is absolutely nothing left to tug out of your bag straps everything start to come out and now you have a bag that looks like this where you have the outside here and then you have the inside here and now shake it to where you get that base of your bag back into the bottom and then You're going to take the inside of your bag here. Now, you can decide to whip stitch this closed by hand, or you can do like I do and just sew a very small seam with your sewing machine because it's quicker um, all the way closed. You just wanna make sure that you tuck in your edges Add a few clips, add a few pins, whichever your preference is, because you want to make sure that those edges stay nice and closed. Like this one right here that's kind of trying to poke out right there. Make sure they stay nice and straight and closed. And honestly, nobody's going to see that little stitch in there because they're going to be so amazed by all of the rest of your stitches and your beautiful fabrics and all of that. So I'm just gonna stitch really, really close to the edge here. Wait till you see once I'm done with this, how close it is to the edge. Can you see how close that is? Super duper close right there. It got a little bit, a little bit poochy right there, but I'm not even gonna worry about it because this is the bottom of the inside of your bag. Now that we've got that, we have one step left to do, and that is top stitch after we get the inside of our bag actually in the inside of our bag. Now, a lot of shaking to make this happen, right? But you want to go ahead and your bag is going to want to do this. Don't let it do that because that's where that seam is. It's wanting to just stay straight, right? So don't, don't do that. Tuck your fabrics, use these same clips again, and go around where the outside of your bag is there, and then there's a seam, and then there's the inside of your bag. That's going to make your straps, which we're going to pull forward and out of the way now, stand up really nice and tall and strong, and we're going to have the chance to reinforce them again when we sew right across here. So I put a couple clips on either side of the strap there to Hold it nice and tall and make sure that nothing is getting in the way. I'm gonna go around my bag, do this, and then we're gonna top stitch it. It's gonna be gorgeous. It is so, so close to being done. Okay, one thing that I want you to be aware of before you start stitching is that you don't have any extra fabric tucked up inside these clips. Make sure there's no little rollover or fold all up in here. It's just that, okay? And then tuck it under. Again, I start in between the straps because that's the easiest spot to start. And start stitching. Okay. 
what this is going to do, let me get in a little bit closer so you can see, what this is going to do is going to keep this nice, tight top edge here and give your bag that finished look, okay? So it's not going to come apart at all. It's going to stay nice and tight across the top. You'll have that nice flat edge that is perfect that keeps the inside inside and the outside outside. adorable tell me how adorable did that tote turn out guys it came together really really fast and if you have the ability to do like I did and you know work on those free motion quilting skills okay that's a good way to work on those free motion quilting skills using smaller pieces of fabric working your way through them you can draw on them you can write with your thread sew and quilt those pieces of material and then work them into your bags, they're amazing. The other thing is with these bags, you can make them whatever size you want, right? I actually have them where I told you exactly what sizes that I used, but if that's not exactly what you're looking for, you're welcome to use the same steps and just make the bag a different size too. So it's a very flexible pattern. It's very fun. These are great gifts. I hope that you have enjoyed the tutorial for this bag. Please make sure make a bag for yourself because if you don't and you make them for gifts for other people, like me, you're gonna want one for yourself as well. So I hope that you have a wonderful summer. I hope you have lots of fun things planned. If you have like amazing adventures planned, I would love to hear about it. Write it down in the comments down below. Tell me what you thought about this tutorial as well. If you are looking forward to making this, I wanna hear about it. I want to know what it is that you're up to, and I can't wait to chat with you in the comments. I'm Kristen with icstarsquilting.com. I'll chat with you soon. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful summer. Bye.